Hey everybody, Jeff Lobb here, Spark Tank Media, um, with Office Hours with Jeff, another episode. I'm excited to be here. We are um, broadcasting live. I always like to give everybody a couple seconds to log in in the sessions, and then I want to introduce our special guest for the day. Um, so I always like to buffer five, ten seconds and discuss what we're talking about, and then I'll introduce our guest. Um, today we're going to be talking about how to leverage Facebook Live, how to not only uh, generate leads, we're going to talk to someone who's actually using it, how he started it, how it's working, mistakes he's made, and we're really going to be as transparent and as authentic as some of the systems and stuff that uh, he's using. So um, at this point, it looks like we should be okay um, to kind of everyone's, I see a few people signing in. We're good. Let me introduce our special guest, um, Jerry DeMeo, uh, a Family First Funding, and I've had the, the pleasure of working with Family First Funding as a company and Jerry himself for the last couple of years. And uh, welcome, Jerry, to the to our show today. Thanks, Jeff. Thanks for having me on today. I really appreciate it. So it's actually a privilege. I'm, ex I'm actually more, I'm excited about being on today. So, so. <laughs> um, so what, um, you know, we're going to talk about a bunch of things today. And, and I've got Jerry live for a couple of reasons, because when, when, you know, I speak at these events and, and I speak a lot with family first and we coach and we train and, and there's, when the light bulb goes off in someone's eyes and I can see it and they execute it is really where the magic happens. And Jerry is absolutely one of those who's crushing it when his light bulb went off. And I want to first, Jerry, if you don't mind, talk about like when we first, where we first, um, like first met and we, you know, we've been seeing each other, but where did the light bulb go off? I, the, the light bulb went off for me, Jeff. You, 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 actually, the first time I met you, the light bulb went off, but, but, it, but it took me a little bit. It, it took me a little bit of time to be on, honest, because when I first met you, yeah, I didn't have a camera that worked on my phone. So, 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 so I've come a long way since the days of a camera that didn't work <laughs> on the phone. And so, 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 so you were a non-smartphone user that first time we were talking about Facebook Live at that point. That's correct. Well, I had a smartphone, but it was, a, the phone was cracked. <laughs> <laughs> the phone was cracked and, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't do a Facebook video. I couldn't do any of that. And I didn't, couldn't take pictures with my phone. So I couldn't do any of that. So, so for those that are a little nervous with technology, you know, I'm not a technology guru by any stretch of the imaginations. A year ago, I had a phone that didn't take pictures or camera. So, so let's be clear. On, let's be clear well, on. That. I think our, our audience today and in the future of this episode of office hours with Jeff is, the transparency of, hey, it, it does. we don't all have to be tech gurus. And I tell everyone all the time, I don't want you to be a tech guru. I just want you to be a better loan officer, a better realtor, a better agent, a better salesperson. And that's all technology should do is make us better at what we actually do to make money. So, right. so thrilled. So, um, you know, your story is fantastic. So the light bulb went off. You weren't even a savvy smartphone user. Um, where did you start? Like, what was like the first week or two of like, I'm going to do this? Well, I, I started. I, I started out. Listen, I have a wonderful. I have something called the Tom and Jerry Real Estate Show. Okay. I, yep. have, I have. I have something called the Tom and Jerry Real Estate Show. I have a, a dear friend and partner, Tom McNeil. That that honestly, Tom was an was an actor and a performer and all that kind of stuff. So it was it was. Hello, Fiel DeMeo. Thank you for joining. This I love this. I get to see my wife. I get to see my wife on. So so. Tom and I got together. And we said, let's do a Tom and Jerry real estate show. So, so you talked about doing video open houses and and things like that. And yeah. we said, come on, let let listen. You and I can do this. So, so, so we went out and we did it. We went out and we did it. And and listen, you know, we we we, you know. And my mother joined in, even though her name isn't Tom and Jerry's, because my mother's a realtor also. So, so we got my mother involved, and we started going out, and we we started hitting the, um, we hit in the streets and hitting listings and and trying to go to listings. We started going to other people's listings to say, hey, you want us to do the Tom and Jerry show at your listings? So, so let's just clarify: Tom being a real estate agent, you're Jerry, right. hence the Tom and Jerry show, which I think is funny because I'm I'm a big Tom and Jerry fan from as a kid too. Tom and Jerry, the mouse and cat. Right. Um, Really cute name took off, but tell me how how sloppy was your first open house? Be real. Uh, we, <laughs> we, we just won it. I mean, we were just winging it. But hey, listen, let's go on. You know, you talk about it. I don't care. I don't care. Let's try to be entertaining, funny. It's not about 
oh, here's the kitchen. Oh, here's the bathroom. Oh, here's the bedroom. Oh, here's this. You know, here's that. Hey, let's be entertaining. Let's try to just, just let's, let's try to get out there. Let's try to get out there. And honestly, from a realtor perspective, listen, it, you don't necessarily do it for the, for the advertising, although all that's good, you want to do something to impress your seller so that when that list is so you or or to get a or to get a price reduction, because listen, look at all the different things we've done and the house still isn't selling, you know, you know, maybe we need to, to do that. So so um you so know. let me let me tell you something I found. I may have shared this with hey, you Tom. and I'm sharing it now. <laughs> There's <laughs> Trump now. So um one of the things I found super impressive is I watched that one of your broadcasts in the beginning days. Right. And, and Tom, Tom was on the camera, right? Tom, real estate agent, and and I'm sharing this to the audience so you understand where the real value prop was and where the differentiator was. And I'm watching it live, and then all of a sudden I heard Tom say, "Well, let me turn it over to Jerry for a second. Now, listen. Anytime in the let's say you take a real estate agent, turn it over to a mortgage person, the typical is going to be the well, let me tell you about our company and tell you about our rates, and let me tell you why I get you pre-qualified and all this stuff." And that didn't happen. What happened was a ridiculous, powerful value proposition where Jerry jumped on. And I'm just I'm blowing smoke because you deserve it here. Um, you. So Jerry jumps on and rather than talk about real estate, he's like, listen, this home happens to be in Woodbridge, New Jersey. And Woodbridge, New Jersey happens to be an area where if you're a commuter to the city, it has two or three train stations that support the Like He went into the details of the value of that property, knowing his market. And knowing the, the real estate community and gave me, even as an outsider, valuable information and nothing to do with the mortgage industry. He told me stuff that I would have never have known for me moving to that area. And that was awesome. That was really like, wow, that's what's supposed to happen. Because if you went into your little pitch, honestly, I'd have been like, ah, eh, just like every other mortgage person wants to tell me how great they are. Tell me something of value. And that was really awesome. So you went down that way. And I think you just did it naturally because that's your personality. And it was great. So that's where the value is. So you've done some open houses. Right. Um, you got the Tom and Jerry show, um, right. which started off rough, got some traction. Um, where's things happening now? Then you started to learn how to do some Facebook advertising and stuff, right? So let's talk about where things have developed with your product. So, so you know, I, I, again, I, I, I had heard at, at one of your events, I heard at one of your, at your event, there were people out there, you know, actually getting leads from Facebook. Um, <laughs> there's Michelle DeMeo. Thanks. Thanks, Michelle. You're the greatest. That Michelle DeMeo happens to be my mom who got me into the business many, 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 many years ago. Um, you know, people got to know us. Yep. You know, people got to know us. They started, I had people, and, and you know, it's so interesting. You know, don't think because people don't comment or like or do anything that they're not watching. Right. But don't think they're not watching because I had I'm on the phone with someone and say, Hey Jerry, you haven't done a show in a while. I'm like I'm like, I didn't even know you watch. <laughs> like I don't even know. I know Tom pulled up at the gas station a month ago and he went to get gas and the guy said, Oh, you're the guy from the Tom and Jerry show. And so so, so you know the what happens and you know, you talked about listen. In the beginning, I was committed to this at that point. You said, Jerry, it's not its not necessarily something that's going to get you leads immediately. This isn't necessarily what you're going to do. is isn't going to get you leads right away. That's right. And this is about branding and building and getting people to know you. And, and you know, Jim Ellick, Mr. Ellick, he's been a realtor for 52 years. And, he's and you know, he, he doesn't use a smartphone still and all that. And he's old school. And he always... So he said, Jerry, you have to meet the people. You have to get out there and you have to meet the people, do 10 business cards every day, commit to it, do that. And I used to do that stuff. Yep. And so, listen, I believe in the old school stuff. I, I really do. But but what I'm able to do now is, Mr. Ellick, not only am I doing 10 business cards a day, I'm doing hundreds and thousands of business cards a day. Right. Mr. Ellick always used to say, Jerry, you have to remind everybody what you do, including your mother and father, because they love you, but they don't love you that much. And you <laughs> have to remind them every day what you do, because you have to continue to remind people what you do. And I've this this platform you've given me and given the Tom and Jerry show and my mom and 
And and honestly, every realtor that I'm fortunate enough to work with, um, honestly, are fortunate to work with me too because I'm bringing new ideas and new things to their to their business. Yeah. And 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 because you talked about all the time, um, if I hear another mortgage person say. We have great rates and great service. If, if I hear that one more time, I'm going to throw up. I, re, I really am. I just, I just, if I hear that one more time, like if I hear that one more time, what are you doing differently that other people aren't? And, and, and I know what I'm doing differently, you know, and, and, and I can help you do it and I can help you generate business. And listen, I happen to be good when people get in front of me anyway, but, 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 and I actually do give great rates and great service. And I, I have to, listen, it, it's important. You know, I'm free to do a lot of this. I happen to have a great, a great assistant. His name is Joe, Joe, Joe Divizio. And, and he, he works with me all day long and, and he allows me the freedom to, to continue to market and continue to meet people and to continue to get out there. Because if, if I, you know, please, I can go on and on. It's, yeah. it's simple. Here, here's how we have to look at this. This is another version of today's prospecting this is all it is it's not it's not a magic bullet it's not going to replace anything you still have to shake hands people to people belly to belly that still all works this is a medium i've said this live and, and i for those who know i just got back from vietnam uh speaking over there and i said this live to them too from a worldwide perspective because they are missing a worldwide marketing opportunity which is what i talked about um facebook live is better and stronger uh, product platform than when the TV was evolved, when television was born. And I say this in this reason, I'll ask anybody in any part of the country, I'll say, if you're in California, you have your local news channel, right? That local news channel, two, four, eight, whatever local news channel is, is good for like within, I don't know, California. If I'm in New Jersey, I can't see your news channel. If I'm in Canada, I can't see your news channel. If I'm on Facebook Live for free, at no cost from my mobile phone and I'm streaming, you could see me in California. You could see me in Russia. You could see me in Europe. You could see me everywhere. And the beauty of not only that, if you didn't see me the first time is I can save it, share it and see me for a long, long time. It exists forever onward. So it's such a ridiculous, powerful platform. When I used to run in my real estate days, local TV cable, which got me that notoriety you're talking about, that I see you all over the place and, hey, you're that guy I saw at, on, at the gas station or on TV. That's what this does. That's what this does. Um, now, there is a way to lead gen from it. Um, it's not meant to be a lead gen magical platform, but it can generate interests. So I want to talk to you about, you know, we started to learn about Facebook ads um, and some lead capture stuff. Let's talk about some of the ads you're running Um maybe some ways that's working. And then I also want to talk about for the audience too, to stay tuned is what didn't work, you know, cause we want to learn from some mistakes too, which we all make. So let's talk about what's working. Facebook ads. So Facebook ads, I, 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 uh, I was determined to learn how to create leads from this, from this platform. Yeah. And so what did I do? I went to Google, I searched the internet and honestly, just like what happens when people are looking for homes on the internet, when I went to Facebook, next thing you know, I'm getting ads from lead generation companies for Facebook. And listen, unlike other lead generation systems, where basically, let's say lead generation companies like Zillow or things like that, where you pay them money to give you leads. Yep. I went to a company called Agent Leads Co. There's other companies out there, but they've been great for me. They they taught me some. They 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 gave me a platform and told me what to do. And, and if I have questions, they still follow up with me. They didn't like leave me out to dry. So I'm giving them a plug because they helped me a lot. Yep. They helped me a lot, get off the ground. And they taught me how to generate leads for myself. So, so I'm no longer relying on something else or a contract with Zillow for a thousand dollars a month to get leads. Okay. The beautiful thing about Facebook leads and creating your own Facebook platform or campaign to create leads is that my budget is my budget. If I want to spend twenty dollars today, yeah, I could spend twenty dollars today. If I want to spend a hundred dollars over the weekend because I think people may be in front of the computer a little bit more and looking, I may spend a hundred dollars over the weekend, and I'll get so many leads for that hundred dollars I spent. And honestly, how many leads I get is based on the strength of my ad or what I'm advertising. But 
I'm creating the lead. I'm creating the advertising. I'm creating everything. I'm not relying on anyone else for leads anymore. Sure. Well, I think you hit a hot, hot button there, which I want to touch on a little further is it really relies on the strength of your ad. I know many people, we've been talking about Facebook ads and running ads and we, we try and teach, but again, people run off on their own a little bit. Um, some then feel, Hey, I can do this myself. I don't need coaching anymore. I don't need this anymore. And they run rogue and then they're not getting a return because they're running ads, but remember, running ads doesn't mean necessarily production or right. generation because the quality of the ad that you just said matters or the words. So let's talk about that for a second. What are some of the things you found? And we all have differences of opinion. So online, if you're listening, maybe some things have worked for you that it didn't work for Jerry. Let's talk what didn't work with some ads that you find. So, um, I'm sorry, I'm laughing because people are posting things and it's and it's, I'm being entertained at the I same know. time. The I've still been planning on doing a who's on first skit. So, so, <laughs> so, so, okay. And I see a lot of this posted on Facebook because you know I have a lot of realtors that are friends and all that, and I see things that they're doing, and they may you know general general information. It's nothing. I found that that you know. Hey, Jerry DeMeo from Family First Funding, you know, great mortgage loan officer, get more information, get more information um, is useless and nobody cares and nobody cares. I see people, everybody on, I see all the realtors taking their MLS listing and posting it on Facebook, you know, and, and, and waiting for the leads to come in. And right. it does not. And, and, and I know they get nothing because I know when I do general things, I get nothing. Right. You know, I get nothing. Right. I get nothing. What what works is specifics like giving and you have to be willing to it, what you're offering has to be giving something. To the you have to be giving them something they want, like, you know, for a free list of homes, contact us today or a free list. Like, so one specific one you said was like a free list of homes in a certain town under right. 300 grand, under 300 grand. And you know, sign up today. And those ads work. Those ads work well for us. But when I do general information, hey, Tom and Jerry show, if you have any questions about real estate, contact us today. Nothing. 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 I still find it interesting. We still have to realize, as a community, as um, even the real estate world, people, you know, will go to an MLS and search. People will go to Zillow and trust the Zillow platform. People trust, like, from the outside world. They trust it because they don't think they're being sold anything. They're just searching and they're just looking. So I'm still finding that people still think that if I offered them a free list of under homes under 200,000, and maybe that's the magic number or homes under 300,000, they think they're still going to get something that no one else is going to be able to find or that still may not pop up like they're the secret listings or it doesn't have to be magical. People just sometimes think they want the edge themselves. And can you send me those? Because I've been looking at homes for 300 grand for the last six months and haven't found anything. So right. it's a great way to share that kind of information. And and I and I want to and I want to be clear because I know there are a lot of realtors watching. Yeah. Well, and, and I want to be clear about a couple of things. This this listen, all these leads and everything we do is all great. But but I, I'm going to talk about A time, B time, and C time real quickly I, you know i'm a salesman i keep plugging him because i'm going to send him this video so he sees it because mr ellick listen i learned a lot and it doesn't mean that that the business hasn't changed it's just i mean it's changed but it, there's still things that are required like you still need to meet the people and three time a time b time and c time c time is waiting for the guy for the co c time <laughs> waiting you know, you know, meeting the appraiser at the house. If you're a realtor, C time. Exactly. You're not making any money on C time, and you're also not generating any any business or anything else. C time. And a lot of us spend a lot of time. You you posted yesterday, yesterday. Busy, 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 busy. C time. The, that that's you're not making any money. Busy running around. Oh, I got to do this. I got to do this. I got to open the you know. C time. C time. Not busy, not making money on C time. And hold that thought for one second, because what I did okay. find that I did not chime back in. You're, I'm glad you mentioned that part. So I, I'm getting some. So 
I, I made a post yesterday about being busy doesn't mean productive, right? And I watched the whole stream of people. When someone posted um, things they were doing that day, right. almost 90 or 95% of that was C time. Right. It was stuff like I'm running, to, like you said, appraisals and I'm at this and I got to drop off a check and I'm doing this. I'm like, there is no new business being generated in any of that time. Right. So go ahead. That's absolutely perfect. So seat time is no money. It's it's running stuff around. Running stuff around. Running stuff around. And, and okay, B time yep. is everything I do on Facebook, my advertising, my my video open houses, my all that stuff is B time. I'm not making money on B time. Still, I'm still not making money. The the goal. <laughs> Yes, Tom. Busy watching us. <laughs> you know, this this, this is his seat time. Yeah, very good. Um, <laughs> so, so the reason we're on B time, B time is B time used to be for me, honestly, in my realtor days, was going knocking on doors in the neighborhood. B time, yep. knocking on doors in the neighborhood. Listen, not that there was anything wrong with it. Listen, that's what there was to do. It was better than C time and doing nothing in the office. Um, you know, or playing solitaire on your computer like a lot of the guys sit there and do while they're, while they're at the office. Um, but B time is now for me creating new ads, creating to do, do a post, do this, B time. And, but here's the thing for all realtors out there. The only reason that I'm on B time is to try to get on A time. Yeah. I'm always working to get on A time. I'm going to plug Mr. Ellick one more time. I know and, and I try to incorporate this into my life too, is he would never leave the office at the end of the day unless he had an A-time appointment for the next day. So he would sit there till 10 o'clock at night, picking up the phone, calling somebody to get on A-time. The goal is to be on A-time. You only make money on A-time when you're on a listing appointment, when you're out showing houses, you're only making money at those times. Everything yeah. else doesn't make money, but you do need B-time to get to A-time. Yeah, and I think a good analogy for other real estate agents is they call them FISBOs, expired, um, um, any of that, you know, you know, kind of stuff that's going to get you an appointment, you know, marketing, prospecting, that kind of stuff. Yep. So great, great analogy of that. Now, is that something, C time, B time? I've heard it in a couple different versions. Was that something you learned personally from Mr. Ellick, or is that something that's been from Mr. Ellick? He, he walks around, hey, you're on C time today. Hey, <laughs> how much A time? His, his rule was, a time once a day, twice on Saturday, twice on Sunday for a realtor. That was if you want to be great. He said you got to be on a time every day, once, twice on Saturday, and twice on Sunday. So right. that was that, that's I learned that there. Get on a time. You're only making money on a time. Yep, love that. Um, and I think other people are appreciating that too. To me, it's it's an absolute you know clarity of where we spend our time and it's something we you know i beat my head against this wall some days when i'm doing coaching sessions and and i'm listening deeply as to what we're doing and we spend so much time doing detailed crap now i understand and here's where a lot of the objections flow in but jeff i've got a lot of paperwork to fill out but jeff i got processing but jeff i got listing information has to get put in well let's face it this is where at some point you learn to manage your process and i think we did this at your sales rally is the four p's is the process and production. You know, you gotta, you gotta learn that the process has to change. You know, there's times where I learned in my real estate business, me sitting, putting data entry stuff into my MLS was killing my time when I'm a better hunter out there trying to get listings than sitting here at seven o'clock at night, missing my family, putting seat time in, trying to get this nonsense in. It wasn't what I could do best. I'd rather go get listings. So it turns out I had to end up hiring someone to build the team and delegate that stuff because there are people that are much better at those details than I. Yep. So, I, so spot on. So let's reel back into our Facebook ads. So specific stuff works better. Um, right. How about the actual then lead generation? So where do you drive them to? They, they want more information. So well, what happens next? They, they want more information. So, so we're driving them to listen, like your platform, the visual farming, the visual farming lead capture form. If, if you're running things, if you're running things that don't have a lead capture form, like visual farming, yep. um, also, you know, Facebook has a lead form, yep. lead capture form, but you need a lead capture because, because seeing, you know, people looking at you is one thing. And, and listen, I'm not, I'm not negating 
right now we're averaging right now we're 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 I'm, I'm trying to get the right word. So, so right, right now, I think we're being viewed over a million times a month between the different things that the Tom and Jerry show are doing. I mean, people actually watching the video, a million views a month, not one video, but multiple videos, the different things. And I try to keep changing content so people see different stuff all the time. Um, so, so, let me clarify. So a million, so a million views over the course of your multi-year Let's face it. Let me just clarify with our group here. How many months are you moving? Excuse me, Jeff, you broke up for a second there. Yeah, I am breaking. I hear echo for some It's reason. better now. Okay. How long have you been doing the show, the Tom and Jerry show? We Should started in November. Right. So yeah. by the time you really ramped up and got it figured out, you're probably into January, February. That's so really by the time I got, by the time my wife, my, my, by the time my wife said, Jerry, we're going to get a new phone for you. And, <laughs> and we went and got, to, and we went and got the new phone. Thank you, babe. I love you for that. <laughs> so we went so and got six months now you're getting a million views over the course of a lot of videos but you're spending some money on advertising too let's be, yeah about what's your spend a month you know two thousand dollars a month roughly okay two thousand dollars so, a month getting a lot of brand you know but also clarify those million views are targeted views correct that's correct listen you if if you might get you might run a television commercial and you might get a million views okay there's six-year-olds watching. There's 12-year-olds watching. There's right. people who are never buying a home watching. That's right. Um, and you may be getting views, but they actually may not. They may be on Facebook while the TV commercial is on. Yeah, <laughs> also, that's right. Um, the, the beauty about Facebook advertising is that I can get so many views in Woodbridge Township only if I want. If I, if I want to get views in all of New Jersey. I can go after all of New Jersey if I want. And then if I only wanted men and women between 23 and 65, I can, I can, I can do that. Um, I can zone in on people who are only searching for houses. Yeah. So I'm getting a million views by people who matter. And you taught me that, Jeff. It's not how many people are watching you. It's how many people ma who matter that are watching you. And I, I, I'm thrilled on how much you actually pay attention and listen. I'm, I just can't even, like, I'm actually blushing at this point that, you know, sometimes we speak until we're blue in the face. And if you're out there and listening and, you know, sometimes we speak a lot, we, it's really, we want to make an impact. We try to make an impact. And, you know, I can't be thankful enough for all the stuff Jerry's been doing and the team at Family First Funding. And they've been, they've been paying attention to this stuff. So, um, really, people just want to matter. And you're right. You're targeting people that matter. So you're generating about a million so views, um, spending a couple grand a month. And I'm sure you can play around with those those numbers. Um, you drive them to a landing page. And they Then they come in as a lead. Right. Biggest challenge, and I'm sure you face a lot of them, is now, of course, converting, getting an appointment. Are they real yet? Do they have to be nurtured? Let's talk about that. Yes. Uh, okay. I'm going to be honest. I'm going to be honest. It's my, it's my, it's my biggest, it is my biggest challenge today. You know, now I learned how to create these leads and, and Gabrielle Smith, you do matter. And thank you so much for joining today. And you've been fabulous and she's a fabulous realtor and we work together and, and your deals are all closing Gab. Don't worry. Joe's in the other room working on your deal. <laughs> my mom on TV. Okay. So I want it to be, I want it to be clear, Gavin, keep up the great work. So I wanted to be clear there, there is work getting done. Listen, the seat time work still needs to get done while we're doing this stuff. So, so, so don't sweat it. Jerry's got a team of people working around this. This is his, this is his brand and his marketing right now. This is, this is B time a little bit here too. So sure. let's focus. All right. So talk to me. Okay. Real, back so, so, so the challenge is to manage all these leads that come in and to manage them properly. And, yeah. and, I'm still, and we're still as a team, and I'm actually working with Family First Funding because I have a good problem. I have, I have more business coming in that that I can really, than I honestly can manage all the follow up and the lead calls and all that stuff. And the challenges I'm having is surrendering some control. Is is some of the challenges, but I am using all the most, you know, you know. Bomb bon video. I'm going to talk about it. I, I know you've worked with him before, and and 
listen, I'm going to tell you a little trick that I use with bomb bomb video right now. Um, All right, let's go. So well, hold on one second. I want to come to bomb bomb. But so okay. wait, real quick. You have a CRM in the company. The company has a CRM. So stuff goes yeah. into a CRM. Um, so you, you're managing it there to nurture, right? right. So they provide you that. You have also you're using um, the calendar appointment scheduling to manage appointments now, which is which one are you using? Um, I'm using I'm different. schedule once. Schedule once. So he's using schedule once to have appointments created based on time slots that he's available. Because I've also watched you, and I'm glad you went to a system. Uh, I've watched you on a broadcast say, hey, guys, I have one more appointment left this Sunday, one more time slot left. And you were like, your schedule must have been packed. But I didn't know what that time slot was. Now I can go to your link and see what time slot's available to meet with you a time and be able to connect with you. Um, so you've got the system of CRM to nurture. You've got the scheduling stuff in place. Now you say you've, you've leveraged BombBomb's platform, which I'm a big fan of BombBomb. So let's talk about what you do with them. Tell me some of your secrets. Tell me what works. So, so with the BombBomb video, I'm able to, through, through our CRM, we use a company called Total Expert here, here at Family First Funding. And we've been using it for about seven months. And, and, and um, in addition to the drip campaigns, and when I say drip campaigns, I'm not talking about here's a here's a. I'm getting there. Here's here's a here's a here from from the mortgage guy. You're getting a recipe for chicken. You know, <laughs> I got I got one today. I got to tell you. I got, yeah, you keep going. I'm gonna find one. I got a doozy today. Yeah, you know, like you know, the mortgage. You're not getting recipe for chicken from me. You're, I, I'm I'm trying my drip campaign to make it very specific and, and stuff that that you want. So so you're getting a drip campaign with some relevant information. Listen, I still don't love the drip campaigns completely because it's just, I don't, I feel like I don't have any control. So, right. so what I'm, what I'm doing with the Bon Bon videos, oh, am, is it too soon for the Bon Bon or no? Jeff? No, I want to talk about it. I just, here, I got a good drip, drip mail today from another real estate agent that just wants to send me junk. Here's one on how to unclog my drains. <laughs> At Six o'clock this morning, I get the message of how to unclog my drains. Very relevant information. I'm sure I can't wait to save this somewhere else. So this is the nonsense that makes me nuts. Um, so no, let's continue on with BombBomb. So you've, you've, and for those who don't know, BombBomb is a video email platform that delivers video, either yourself on video, a property on video, something on video, more so yourself, in a very clean, organized format by email and allows you to get your message properly viewed. Um, so you can actually see it. I put the website up there. I've been using bomb bomb for years. Um, and a big shout out to those guys, Steve and Darren, they're doing a phenomenal job out there in Denver. Um, but let's talk about, so how are you using it now daily? So, so what I'm doing, I'm creating videos. I'm creating videos that I send out. Sometimes I do it to individual. Like I started with, after I met with the client, they left my office. I would, I would just click on the button. I'd say, I'd say, hi, this is Jerry DeMeo. Listen, I it was such a great, it was so wonderful meeting you, you and your family today. I look forward to working together. If you have any questions, reach out to me anytime. I said, and I hit send, I hit send and boop. And two minutes later, they have the Bon Bon video and, and I can actually track when they opened it or when they, or when I see when they open the email and I see when they watch the video. So yeah. I can track that, but, but when I use it with my CRM, I'm sending out a thousand, let's say I'm sending out a thousand bomb bomb videos. You can only do 10 at a time. So it takes a little time to, to, to do this, but listen, I'm working B time to get on a time. So, so I'm working B but time to get on a time. Just to clarify, you know, it's, it's they're, they're, it, the amount they limit is, is really helping you to prevent how much so you don't get put into spam filters and you didn't get, you don't get blacklisted. I, I, I that's a preventative thing to keep you getting views at the end right. user. Yeah. So I send out 10 at a time and then I sort of sit back and it'd be eight o'clock at night and I'm, and I'm, and I'm, I'm finally getting to see my lovely wife. Thank you for allowing me to work. I'm finally getting to see my wife. And I said, Ooh, Pete Johnson just watched my video. And I pick up, I pick up the phone. I go, Hey Pete, this is Jerry DeMail. Listen, I was thinking about you. And I just wanted to see, you know, where you are in the process, if, if this weekend may be a good time for our appointment. And 
And Pete doesn't know that I happen to know he just watched that video. Yep. So I know Pete was thinking about me too. So what the beautiful thing about Bomb Bomb video is it allows me to to strike when the iron's hot. That's right. So, so it's, it's all best. about timing. I don't want to get somebody when they're out at the Little League game with their kid. I want to get them when they're when they're when their timing's right. And obviously if they opened it and now they're watching my video, now I know the timing's right. So I get a little a little insight. So the video alone is great, but the fact the tracking system is the special part about it. I agree. And, and they've just added some new features. Um, it integrates with Gmail, which I like a lot. Um, now they've got the opportunity, which is really cool for real estate too, is if I'm shooting a video now, um, which is a new feature they just added, I would only have the video say on me, I could flip the camera now and show, you know, Hey, it's me here. I'm at the home. Let me give you a quick, you know, peek at the home. And I could flick the camera back and show what I'm showing and come back to me. So it's a nice little new feature they threw in, which sounds simple, but really kind of magical when you're shooting little videos, you know, how, how, what a big deal that makes. Yeah. Especially if you're previewing something for somebody else, or you're showing somebody some of your, you know, your skill level of what you are as a real estate agent. Here's something I look for on a home inspection. Something you might be adding value can show both sides of that camera now. So, and 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 little one of the keys they trick they give you on bomb on video and 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 I've been using it for some of the regular videos is is sort of holding up a holding up a sign in your in your in your video so that people can see something so they can look at the front of the video and catch that's one of the secrets and Tom and I did a little one and Tom kept it in front of his face the whole time and he would just sort of go. And answer the questions, and he would, and he, and then he would cover himself. It was really, it was really cute. It got a lot of, it got a lot of success. <laughs> that's that's the cuteness of the show. It keeps it entertaining as well. You got to be entertaining, or it doesn't work. Um, all right, so um, so I guess you know you, you convert leads, you get them in the pipeline. Now you got to nurture them. Um, and while we can't, you know, I'm sure some stuff you have right now hasn't even been nurtured at all. It might take six months. I think this is where most people lose. They don't right. give it time. They don't manage those leads. They might not be ready to buy now or next month or next year. So, I mean, in a nutshell, in all transparency, have you have you closed business? Yeah, I, I, I'm going to be honest. We, we, we've closed more already than we'll ever than we'll ever spend this year on 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 the advertising. Okay. You know, I, work, I do so I do a lot of this as a team with my Tom and my mother Michelle and myself and yeah. you know we've closed enough to cover it um our cost for the next year or two possibly okay. and, and that to, to listen so so then the question is people go well, how's your conversion how's your conversion what are you converting that's all anyone ever asks when they ask the question is and and the answer is I don't know yet I don't know yet because anyone that worked leads knows that leads are a 90 day to 18 month grind. Amen. And, and in 18 months, you know, you know, you know, the pipeline keeps building and building and building and building. And, and here's the challenge that I'm running into. So I have, you know, 2000 leads and as you know, but I got a hundred, you know, I'm working these 2000 leads and, and another hundred came in today. And then another hundred came in the next couple days and, and how do you you know but leads are 90 day to 18 month process anywhere you go or call or check and and you know a lot of them you're not going to land until the ninth or tenth time you reached out to them so right so, so you know i'm in that process now got it um and i think you know the, the power of what you're getting to is you're building a, a, a database of people that showed interest um building a huge database is amazingly powerful which some may not understand at this point, but the power of having that data today, those emails today, um, with the technology that's being born as we speak, that's available even right now. I mean, companies out there like First.io and some other companies that are taking email addresses and smart targeting and being able to take it and convert it and tell you when people are getting ready to list or buy or some other platforms that are evolving, you know, that's the power of having a good database. And if they're not aggregating stuff, if you even just got a, you know, a thousand more people a month, those are more people that you have opportunities to market to, talk to, refer from, you know, and we stop to think sometimes that each person, just take one silly email address, johnsmith at yahoo.com, right? 
How many people do you think John Smith really knows as well that you don't have in your database yet, but if you did a good job with them, they could refer you to. There's at least another 200 people behind that email address that potentially could be a referral if you do your job, if we actually pay attention to nurturing and working leads properly. There's no magic, there's no magic pill in this business. Right. Get, and, 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 you know, work takes work. Yep. And nothing comes easy. Everybody, you know, you got a lot of new agents in the business and they go, oh, well, if I spend some money on leads, all of a sudden I'm going to start making money. Well, the reason that guy's making money is because he's buying more leads than me, you right. know, or, or something like that. And the, the work begins when the lead comes in, you know, you know. Again, I'm so fortunate that what I've learned between you and the other systems that I've had, I, I can control my own destiny. Yeah, you got to put the work in. I can go out of business tomorrow, and it's not going to change my business at all. Right. And, you know, and to clarify leads in general, I just want to make a gen generic term. I look at lead sources as this. If you can get a return on any platform, and maybe it is a Zillow or Truly, and that's what they make. Look, if it's another stream, if you're doing this and you're making your return, but let's say you added five more people and you need more. And let's just say you spent an agent spends 500 or a thousand bucks with Zillow or truly or realtor.com or whatever platform. The goal is this. If I could generate a return in 12 months, meaning I spend 500 a month at six grand a year. If I made 10 or 15 grand from that five grand, would you do it again is the question. All day long. Right. It's like All me saying, long. hey, here's five bucks. You're going to give me 20. Okay, well, here's another five bucks. Give me 20. So the, the problem is we stop too soon. We don't analyze. We, we think in three months, if it doesn't work, it, it sucks. And we get on a rant and we get on this whole, like, you know, we stop following up. We stop nurturing. And I think the biggest user error in all of this is our lack of skill to convert people and nurture them. So I, 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 I tell everybody when I used to talk to realtors and a team, don't quit five seconds before the miracle is going to happen for you. And they usually give up before it gets, they usually give up yep. before it starts to work. Like, like, Oh, Tom and I, when we started the Tom and Jerry show and a month went by and we didn't get any leads and we say, Oh, screw this. This doesn't work. Let's yeah. go to, let's, let's jump to something else. And then we jump to something else. And then we jump to something else. And you know, you play the Gary V video, you know, and he said, 99% of you are going to do crap with what I'm telling you. Right. And I ran out the door that day and said, I got to make it work. You right. know, got to make it up because, because the other thing that realtors and mortgage people don't, don't do enough. And Gary V did it for me in there. He said, it's not going to be long before this runs out. He created a fear of loss. That's right. Me. And I try to do that with all my clients, and I don't think realtors do it enough. I think they're too accessible. They do this. Listen, I tell Mr. and Mrs. Jones, I would love to work with you, and I'd be willing to work with you. But if you're not willing to follow my process exactly, I can't work with you. You're going to have to go work with Chase or Wells Fargo because I'm not willing to, to work under those terms. You can't want the business more than they do. Right. And, and you have to create a fear of loss. True. I don't think people do that. They don't create a fear of loss. And Gary V created a fear of loss in me that day on that video where he said, you have a short window here. You have a short window here. Right. I, you know, I, but, and you're right. We, and, he, and for those who haven't seen, you know, we're big fans of Gary V. Um, definitely um, fun to watch. He was at our, he keynoted the Inman conference um, last year. We sat front and center, just another great guy that gets it. Um, so I try and leverage, like when I talk, you know, I try and say, look, it's not always about me. If I could bring value from others. So I played for a lot of our clients, the Gary V video, and then tied in a talk about it because it makes a lot of sense. And he's right. This will be here maybe for, let's say, a short window where it's going to be really successful. And then like anything else, it's going to get super crowded. However, like anything else, Jerry, you took the bull by the horns and said, OK, I'm going to do this. But guess what? When this gets really crowded, something else is going to be available. Maybe it's Instagram video platforms. Maybe it's going to be Snapchat's live platforms. Maybe it's going to be a brand new thing we haven't heard of platform to market and advertise. The goal is, is always just be, and I ask these two questions all the time, is find out where your audience is, both online and off. Where's your audience and where are they online and off? 
Where are they in person? Are they in the stores? Are they at the coffee shops? Are they at the delis? Are they at Starbucks? So you can see them in person. And what platforms are they online? And I asked this question um, uh, last week to a group. And I said, where's your, where's your customers? Just pick two. I don't need to hear 10 platforms. If they're not on Twitter, that doesn't mean you got to go sign up for Twitter. You probably haven't logged into your Twitter account in a year. Right. So he's like, well, my, my main customers, 80% of them are on Facebook and Instagram. Perfect. Spend your time there and own it. Then I had another guy say, well, for me, I'm a little bit younger. It's Instagram and Snapchat. Awesome. Spend your time there. It's not complicated. When you try and do five or six of these things, you can't keep up. I mean, we're now we're trying to become social media gurus instead of good real estate agents. Just right. find out where you're and when your customers move. And here's a great example. Five, six years ago, Craigslist. That's where they all were. Right. Remember that. Now, I'm not saying they're still not there, but the majority aren't there anymore. They went somewhere else. But man, we killed Craigslist. We were all over Craigslist because that's where they were. So. I'm not worried about you and taking it to any other platform as it goes because you're just willing to do it. And hopefully you'll have your team built and money coming in. You'll be able to kind of shift them on the fly. So, and, and, and I like to share this, and I've shared this before. Listen, if you're good in a worker and, 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 and you, if you're in this business, you don't need to worry about a turn in the market. My best years ever were in 2008 and 2009 and 2010. When the market crashed, the cream will rise to the top in the most difficult markets. So we don't yeah. have to worry. The, the people that are good and their workers, listen, you're going to survive any market in this business. In fact, you may find that you do better when the listen, because what happens is the pie, the pie shrinks, but also half of the, you know, all the, all the onesies and twosies drop out of the industry so now right. you have a bigger piece of a smaller pie so, so yeah. i found that to be true i was always told this and this made a lot of sense to me is you should be making money when the market is going up and or going down the only problem you have is when it sits flat and nothing happens right. which happens rarely so in a good market or a bad market you should be making money if you're good at this business you should be making money it's the only concern you should have is when it's stale and no one moves and holds their bar, then you're then stale. It hurts, but it's rare. It stays stale long. So, um, all right. So, you know, you, you've done a, a fantastic job. Is there any last advice tips to maybe the newbies out there or maybe people trying to dabble with this stuff that you can just share with them? Sure. I, 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 I I'd love to. And again, thank you for having me on. And, and Lisa, thank the realtors for joining, joining the broadcast today. And I want to thank all the realtors that I'm working with because they're doing a fabulous job and we could all do better. Me, my assistant, my team, we could all do better and we're always trying to do better. Like we're never happy and we're never satisfied. And we do love what we do and we love what we do, which makes it easy to come to work today. It's not a job. It's great. Great. I don't like when people say, oh, you guys are doing all this out of the box stuff. You know, this isn't out of the box stuff. This is in the box. The reason things are outside the box is because somebody tried it already and it didn't work and they threw it out of the box. The success is in the corners of the box, outside of your comfort level. You got to reach to do things that are making you uncomfortable. I'm going to use this last example. You know, I was a basketball coach before I used to do this, Jeff. Yep. And I was a basketball player. And if anyone's into sports, I needed to get better with my left hand. I needed to be able to go right and I needed to be able to go left. But when I started learning how to use my left, it was very uncomfortable. It was right. very uncomfortable until I worked at it over and over and over and over again. And then it became actually natural to me. Right. And that's the way I treat these things that are uncomfortable. I need to, I need to do something that's uncomfortable to get better and, and that's what I'm trying to do. This stuff isn't all comfortable. It's not all comfortable, but it's becoming more natural as, as I do it. So that's what, don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. Don't be afraid to be uncomfortable. That's where the success comes. You, you listen, you, it's easy to guard somebody that can only go right. Yeah. But if they can go right and they can go left, they're very hard to guard and defend. And it's very few people can do it. Yeah. Very few people can do it, even in the pros. Very few people are as strong right as they are left 
And, and, and that's what I say. So, so work, work, work on your left hand to, to, to expand your business. That's, that, that's a great analogy to wrap up our show. And I, I thank you enough. And so the money is made in the uncomfort zone. So get uncomfortable. We talked about this at the sales rally too. It can be more perfect. So let's get uncomfortable. Let's do this stuff. Um, I can't thank you enough for your time uh, today sharing openly. Uh, I want to thank Family First Funding for you know allowing me to work with you guys. Uh, many of my other clients might be watching too. We want to keep driving this kind of stuff. I'd um, love to have you on our show too and talk about other things that are working in the business and what's not. We keep it very real here. We're transparent. We try and call out all the things that don't work too so we stop making mistakes and elevate our game. So um, Spark Tank Media, Office Hours with Jeff, thank you guys for watching now or in the future. And I really appreciate all your time today. So, yeah, everybody. Thanks, man. See you. See you guys.